Hey, welcome, Pastor Jeff. Another daily word and an exciting one today that I want you to participate with me. On this third global day of repentance, speaking of repentance, this is a picture of George Washington at Valley Forge, Christmas 1776, praying alone in the snow, Valley Forge outside of Philadelphia, and just about to listen to the Holy Spirit for his help, his wisdom, how to defeat the far larger, more successful, already winning British military. Well, we have to do the same this very uh, July 4th, this coming Saturday, 2020. There will be a global day of repentance. I'm calling you. Uh, many others will join us. We have close to 700 people in 20 six nations from the earlier two global days of repentance back in May, where the focus was on Malawi. This time, this Saturday, the focus is on the United States of America, which was birthed by God and his miracles, including that miracle that next day, where Washington's troops surprised the Hessian army, the the mercenaries hired by the British and um, surprised them. They were uh, celebrating Christmas, having a lot of uh, liquor and so forth, sleeping. General Washington uh, marched his troops and crossed the Delaware River, surprised them, took about a thousand hostage, losing no troops except for one or another who were lost by uh, frostbite. They were so uh, poor and impoverished and untrained, they, they did not even have shoes, many of them. So we're praying for that same miracle for the United States of America, which is in great uh, battle right now. This battle is at least as big, if not bigger, because it's a spiritual battle as well as a physical battle. This is a battle as big as the Revolutionary War with General Washington and the Civil War. And Lincoln, speaking of the Civil War, pr promulgated three separate days which were called humiliation, fasting, and prayer. And basically the proclamation that he uh, published in 1863 said, we have forgotten God. That is exactly where we're at in the United States of America and other Western countries. Oh yes, there's a token expression at the end of a speech, God bless America. It's still on our coins. Nonetheless, that devotion and that public honoring of who our living God is and the gift from Christ on the cross, from his blood, we get, and so does all humanity, liberty. Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. Such a devout Christian believer, he was willing to suffer death if we could not have godly liberty. Today we have people who believe they, as the elitists, know more than you. They would like to run the government, tell you what to do, make rules for you, and government would be the the force that tells you how to live, as opposed to the earlier U.S. Constitution where a very limited government, limited, protected the individual. The individual, and it was assumed would be a godly individual, honoring the word of God, humbly submitting to the living God. Well, that's at issue right now. It's a spiritual battle. Frankly, there's just two forces in the world. There's the spirit of the risen Christ, and he has all authority in heaven and on earth, Matthew 28, 18. Read it for yourself. Versus, of course, he's already won, but still, there is a spirit of Antichrist, a spirit of Satan, a spirit of humanism, that says, I wanna do it my way, a spirit of rebellion. We're seeing rebellion in our young people, in the streets, on the media, it's, it's um, run amok. And so here are the prayer points 
for the United States. In addition to your repenting on Saturday in your own time zone, taking alone time with the Lord, any part of those 24 hours of July 4th, where you live in any one of those nations, there's at least 26 nations that will be participating. In addition to your own private time, confessing your sins and repenting, if you choose to do that, getting rid of that old sin stronghold, replacing it with God's word. In addition, we're asking you to intercede for the United States. Here are the three prayer points. Pray that Americans will return to his covenant. Yeah, the Mayflower Covenant, 400 years ago when the pilgrims landed in what is today Massachusetts, they made a covenant called the Mayflower Compact, and they honored God. They gave him all glory. They submitted to God. They feared God and not men. So our first prayer point is that we will return to this covenant, fearing God and not men. Secondly, that we would pray that through his various words, including Acts chapter 17, to me it's set very clearly how we are one blood. God has us in different nations, and he's got us alive at this time, but we are one blood, one race, the human race. Pray that through his word, the spirit of racism will be exposed as a lie of the enemy. Even the word racism is uh, a lie. There's only one race. So it's an attempting to split us as a race by even using the word white racism, black racism, yellow racism, Native American racism, all this, all this is really a lie. The truth is we are of one blood, red. <laughs> and God has appointed us in different nations. Read that in that wonderful speech that Paul gives to the men of Athens. And number three, the prayer point is that we, with the fullness of the Holy Spirit, would heal the divisions in the body of Christ in the United States between Protestant, between Catholic, between those that are humanistic, who've been apostate, the nation goes in the direction of the church. The nation is a mess because the church is a mess. So we pray that that would be a healing. And how is it healed? By the word of God and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The two combined, the revelation of the supremacy of the one body, the one new man, as it says in Ephesians 2. And God has already called you and me to be members of his royal priesthood. We are his bride. He's the soon coming bridegroom. So the purpose of this global day of repentance, and there will be others roughly once a month, the purpose is for you and me to cleanse and to be ready as the bride for the soon coming bridegroom. Check out Ephesians 5 verses 25 to 27, and you'll notice the Lord himself is going to do the cleansing through the sprinkling of his word. It's the word of God that cleanses us from old sin strongholds so that we would be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray there would be a remarkable outpouring of repentance individually all over the planet this July 4th. And then Additionally, many would intercede for the United States to return to its godly roots, to heal the divisions in the body of Christ, to expose the revelation that we are one race, one human race. And Lord, we just pray for a blessing on this day coming up. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Join me on, on Saturday, the 4th of July. God bless you.